What is the arts and crafts movement? The arts and crafts movement, which lasted from 1860 to 1910, was championed by a loose group of artists. Designers, writers, and architects with both aesthetic and social concerns. It developed first in Britain, and then in the United States. Where it is called the American craftsman style. Inspired by the ideas of art critic John Ruskin. Its supporters believed that industrialization resulted in the diminished quality of decorative objects. And that this was at least partly to blame for social problems of the era. One of the leaders of the arts and crafts movement, William Morris, 1834-1896. Also believed that beautiful art should be available to everyone, and that the status of decorative arts should be raised. To the status of paintings and sculptures, traditionally considered to be examples of fine art. Other artists associated with the arts and crafts movement include Gustav Stickley. 1858-1942 an American designer and furniture maker known for his geometric simplicity, along with Charles Rennie Mackintosh. 1868-1928, a Scottish designer and architect also associated with Art Nouveau. Arts and crafts architects included Philip Webb, 1831-1913, Charles Voisey. 1857-1941, and Frank Lloyd Wright, 1867-1959, who is associated with the Prairie School. An American offshoot of the arts and crafts movement based in Chicago. What was the Hudson River School? The artists of the Hudson River School, such as Thomas Cole, Asher B. Durand, Frederick Edwin Church, and Albert Bierstadt, were American artists interested in establishing an American tradition separate from the influences of European art. The work of this informal group was certainly initially inspired by Romanticism and European landscapes but demonstrated a certain realism, and was philosophically tied to transcendentalism. As expressed by the American philosophers Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. Through open air, or plain air, painting, which required significant hiking and traveling to locations that reached from the Catskills to Niagara Falls to Yosemite Valley. The artists of the Hudson River School depicted an apparent untouched Eden. That juxtaposed sweetly pastoral scenes with the power of the American wilderness. What is the difference between suprematism and constructivism? Both suprematism and constructivism were art movements that developed in Russia in the early 20th century and promoted geometric abstraction, however. Unlike suprematism, constructivism promoted the idea that art had an important social function. The difference between the two is therefore primarily ideological, rather than aesthetic.
What is the Bauhaus? The Bauhaus was a progressive art and design school established in Weimar, Germany, in 1919. With the goal of training art students to create works that blended artistry with commercialism. The school was home to some of the most well-respected and revolutionary artists, designers, and architects of the day, including Paul Klee, 1879-1940, Johannes Itten, 1888-1967, and Vasily Kandinsky, 1866-1944, who lived together on site in the specially designed school. The first director of the Bauhaus was Walter Gropius, 1889-1983. A renowned modern architect known for his interest in function. The courses covered both practice based art training, on topics such as painting, furniture making, ceramics, bookbinding, metalworking, and eventually architecture, as well as more theoretical concepts including art historical analysis, color theory, and even meditation. Unlike many art schools, the Bauhaus included the applied arts in its curriculum and actively sought out design commissions with the goal of creating art objects that blended art and craft. Students infused everyday objects with elements of high design. For example, Peter Kaleyer's 1922 design for a cradle reflects both geometric simplicity and functional efficiency. The politically left-leaning Bauhaus began to lose funding as more conservative policies took hold in Germany during the 1920s. The school first moved to Dessau, and then to Berlin but was eventually closed in the 1930s as the Nazis gained power. Many of the key Bauhaus leaders and faculty members Walter Gropius, Laszlo M. O. Holinecki, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, Joseph Albers emigrated to the United States. The Bauhaus embrace of industrialism and its goal of creating functional design made an enormous impact on the art and architecture of the 20th century. What is Distigil? The violence and destruction of World War I shocked the World and groups of artists responded in various ways. For Dutch painter and architect Theo van Dusburg, 1884-1931, and Dutch painters Piet Mondrian, 1872-1944, and Bart van der Leck, 1876-1958. The goal was to create art that promoted universal peace and harmony, both visually and politically. They named their movement the Stijl, which literally means the style. The Stijl is characterized by flat colors and simplified. Rectilinear forms a result of the group's need for visual clarity and mathematical simplification. Distigil is considered to be reductive because visual complexity has been distilled or reduced to only the most pure, meaningful elements. For example, distigil artists preferred primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, or neutral colors such as black, white, 
and gray. The term distigital can be used to describe painting, furniture design, and architecture. Works include Jared Riotveld's Red Blue Chair, 1923. The Schroeder House in the Netherlands, and the paintings of Piet Mondrian. Who was Mondrian? Piet Mondrian, 1872-1944, was a Dutch painter who made significant contributions to 20th century abstraction, especially geometric abstraction. He was an important part of the distigital movement and he is most well known for paintings that depict flat geometric grids in neutral and primary colors. During his early career, Mondrian's art was not totally abstract. Paintings such as Still Life with Ginger Pot, 1911, and Grey Tree, 1912, show the artist's early flirtation with Cubism and even earlier works such as Mill at Evening. 1905, are linked to the Dutch landscape tradition. Mondrian's style changed throughout his career. He was influenced by Cubism, but believed that the goal of painting should be complete abstraction as a vehicle for communicating reality. He supported the idea that color and form could impose pure reality on the viewer in what he called plastic expression. According to Mondrian, a work of art needed to balance movement, form, and color in order to achieve this reality, an aesthetic philosophy called neoplasticism. Mondrian's paintings, such as composition with large red plane, yellow, black, gray and blue, 1921, are meticulously painted to achieve the utmost informal balance and produce dynamic energy, a sense of depth, and a balance between simplicity and complexity. Who was L.E. Corbusier? L.E. Corbusier, 1887-1965, was an architect and designer whose real name was Charles Edouard Ginaret. He was also a painter and writer, publishing towards a new architecture. In 1923, L.E. Corbusier's approach to architecture can be explained in his statement that a house is a machine for living, quoted in Arneson 561. He is known for early home designs and later urban renewal projects. One of his earliest and most famous home designs is the Villa Savoy. Built between 1928 and 1930 in Poissy, France. The rectangular plan of the house allows for long, expansive windows that help to bring the outside in. Raised on pillars, the Villa Savoy is an early attempt to design a domestic space around the use of an automobile, which could be driven and parked under the house. For his urban projects, L.E. Corbusier believed that architecture could serve as a solution to poverty. He envisioned a total city, in which uniform architectural design would create an ideal living environment. Between 1947 and 1952, 
he designed the Unite de Habitation in Marseilles. France, with concrete as a primary building material. The project included duplex apartments along with shops, restaurants, and rooftop park space a complete community. Le Corbusier's work on the Unite de Habitation inspired an architectural style named Brutalisme. What is Luminism? Luminism is a 20th century word used to describe a 19th century American painting style. Characterized by landscapes and nature scenes featuring diffused light effects and invisible brush strokes. Artists associated with the luminist sensibility include George Caleb Bingham, Asher Durand, Martin Johnson Heed, and other artists also considered part of the Hudson River School. A good example of the style is Bingham's Fur Traders Descending the Missouri, 1845. A painting filled with luminous mist reflecting off the Missouri River during the early morning. Two figures seated in a canoe, father and son. Wear bright clothes that contrast with the color and tone of the hazy trees in the background while what is thought to be a bear cub sits in the far end of the canoe, casting a dark shadow over the water. Martin Johnson heeds sunset over the marshes, see 1890 1904 is another example of American luminism. The painting depicts a red-tinged sunset over the salt marshes of Massachusetts. With a pointed haystack prominently positioned in the foreground. Luminism was an important part of early American painting as artists attempted to capture the essence of the country's landscapes and exemplifies both romantic and later realist tendencies in 19th century art. What was the Chicago School? The Chicago School is a name given to a group of architects and designers. Working in Chicago around the turn of the century, including Daniel Burnham. 1846 to 1912, William L. E. Baron Jenny, 1832 to 1907 and Louis Sullivan 1856 to 1924 One of the greatest engineering innovations associated with the Chicago School is the development of the steel-framed skyscraper The use of iron and steel allowed engineers to build ever taller buildings usually for commercial purposes. Some of the earliest skyscrapers include the Home Insurance Building, 1884, and the 10-story Rand McNally Building, designed by Burnham and Root in 1889. Why was Horatio Greenoff's sculpture of George Washington so controversial? Horatio Greenoff, 1805 to 1852, was a neoclassical sculptor and artist. And is considered to be the first professional American sculptor. His grand marble sculpture of President George Washington was modeled after a 
Sculpture of Zeus at Olympia by Phidias, an ancient Greek sculptor. And depicts the first president semi-nude, wearing a Roman toga, and seated in a lion throne. His right arm points up towards heaven in a pose similar to Raphael's. Depiction of Plato in the Renaissance fresco, The School of Athens. Greenoff's purpose with this pose was to emphasize Washington's role as a military leader and philosopher. When the sculpture was displayed in the Capitol Rotunda in 1841, however, the public found it shocking and inappropriate, and some even found it funny. The sculpture fell into disrepair and was eventually moved to the Smithsonian. It can now be seen at the National Museum of American History. Why was Joseph Albers interested in the square? Joseph Albers, 1888-1976, was a progressive German artist who taught at the Bauhaus and went on to become one of the most influential art teachers in the United States. He held posts at the influential Black Mountain College in North Carolina and at Yale University, where he taught color theory and abstraction and experimented with visual perception and illusion. Albers is known for his series of prints and paintings titled Homage to the Square, in which he placed a square within a square using various colors, creating a dynamic and often ambiguous sense of depth, geometry, and color contrast. For such apparently simple paintings, Albers was able to use the square to experiment with color theory and depth perception in a profound way. What is the difference between Romanticism and Realism? Although seemingly at odds, 19th century realism overlapped quite a bit with the Romantic movement of the same period. While the Romantics reacted against the Enlightenment and were often idealistic in their representation of historical and current events, the 19th century realists were interested in accurately depicting the human condition with an element of social awareness. Both realists and romantics value direct observation of nature. Though realists further emphasized social observation and, occasionally, political and social satire. How did the art of Spain influence art in the New World? Starting in the 16th century, Spanish culture began to dominate Central and South America as Spanish conquerors destroyed native temples and missionaries worked to convert native populations to Catholicism, sometimes forcefully. By the 18th century, Catholicism in Latin America had become infused with native beliefs, which directly inspired new styles of art and architecture. An example of this fusion can be seen in the nearly 12-foot-tall atrial cross from the Basilica of Guadalupe in Mexico City, which was made sometime before the 1560s. 
This large, stone crucifix was hung in the church's atrium and was decorated by native artists commissioned by Christian missionaries. The cross decoration blends images associated with Christ, such as the crown of thorns and the holy shroud, with Central American symbols of the tree of life. The atrial cross was a common decoration in parts of the church where new native converts were introduced to Catholicism, and the decoration of the cross at Guadalupe underscores its function as a visual marriage of cultures and beliefs. Who was Henri de Toulouse Lautrec? Artists such as Cezanne, Gauguin, and Van Gogh sacrificed three-dimensional realism in an attempt to express a new kind of authenticity, or truth, in their work. The result was pictures that often looked flat, and emphasized boldness of color over depth and space. Henry de Toulouse-Lautrec, 1864-1901, made paintings and posters that shared many of these qualities. Toulouse-Lautrec was fascinated by the Bohemian Montmartre, an entertainment district in Paris where many Impressionist artists lived and worked, including Edgar Degas, who was a major influence on Toulouse-Lautrec. He was physically impaired due to a combination of illness and childhood accidents which resulted in stunted growth in his legs and difficulty with mobility. Perhaps because of this, he was enamored with the dance halls and nightclubs of Montmartre. And many of his elegant paintings and posters illustrate lively dancers and cafe patrons chatting, moving, and having a great time. His painting, at the Moulin Rouge 1892 to 1895 depicts a scene at one of the most popular clubs in Paris at the time the Moulin Rouge to the far right a green-faced dancer May Milton is reminiscent of Degas dancers under the sharp artificial lights of the theater at some point in history Someone cut her out of the picture. Possibly due to her strange appearance and scandalous personality in real life, though the cut piece has since been reattached. Toulouse Lautrec's posters, such as Moulin Rouge, La Golieu, 1891, feature outlined forms and flat color similar to Japanese woodblock prints. What is art for art's sake? During the 19th century, there was, and continues to be, a debate about the role and function of art in society. The term art for art's sake was first coined by Victor Cousins, a French philosopher and reflects the tenets of aestheticism, which is centered on the idea that there is no purpose for art other than beauty. There were some critics of this idea. Karl Marx, for example, thought that art is a reflection of social class and has the power to make political change. The foremost English art critic, John Ruskin, believed that art had both political and social significance and therefore had a purpose more far-reaching than beauty alone.
What is Expressionism? The term Expressionism is commonly used in the arts, but with a capital E. It refers to an art movement that developed in Germany at the start of the 20th century. German Expressionism, like Fauvism, was concerned with communicating powerful feelings. Through color and visual style and Expressionist works often incorporate meaningful symbols. There were two important groups of painters who were part of the Expressionist movement in Germany. The first was called Die Brücke, the bridge. And the second was known as Der Blaue Reiter, the Blue Riders. What is Brutalism? The term brutalism was coined in 1954 and refers to a style of modern architecture developed by L.E. Corbusier, who promoted the use of rough concrete and favored heavy forms. Reinforced concrete can take on sculptural qualities, as in L.E. Corbusier's design for Notre Dame Duo. 1950-1954, with its flowing roofline and round, Asymmetrical Tower Brutalism was most popular during the 1960s and 1970s and coincided with the concept of art brute developed by artist Jean Dubuffet. What is Brutalism? The term brutalism was coined in 1954 and refers to a style of modern architecture developed by L.E. Corbusier, who promoted the use of rough concrete and favored heavy forms. Reinforced concrete can take on sculptural qualities, as in L.E. Corbusier's design for Notre Dame Duo. 1950 1954, with its flowing roofline and round, Asymmetrical Tower Brutalism was most popular during the 1960s and 1970s and coincided with the concept of art brute developed by artist Jean Dubuffet. What is Dada? Dada was an anti-rational, anti-establishment movement that began in Europe. Dada was concerned with upending tradition and embracing chance, anarchism, and new forms of art making. The word Dada itself is essentially meaningless and was supposedly chosen from the dictionary at random by a group of artists and writers in Zurich, Switzerland. In 1916, the sound Dada is childish, and reminiscent of a baby's first words. Dada was a reaction against the horrors of World War I, though earlier movements such as Cubism and the writing of Kandinsky, certainly inspired it as well. Dada's influence spread and notable Dada groups were established in Germany. Paris, Barcelona, and New York. Artists associated with Dada include André Breton, 1896-1966, Jean, Hans. Arp, 1886-1966, Marcel Duchamp, 1887-1968, 
and Man Ray, 1890-1976. What is Dada? Dada was an anti-rational, anti-establishment movement that began in Europe. Dada was concerned with upending tradition and embracing chance, anarchism, and new forms of art making. The word Dada itself is essentially meaningless and was supposedly chosen from the dictionary at random by a group of artists and writers in Zurich, Switzerland. In 1916, the sound Dada is childish, and reminiscent of a baby's first words. Dada was a reaction against the horrors of World War I, though earlier movements such as Cubism and the writing of Kandinsky, certainly inspired it as well. Dada's influence spread and notable Dada groups were established in Germany. Paris, Barcelona, and New York. Artists associated with Dada include André Breton, 1896-1966, Jean, Hans, Arp, 1886-1966, Marcel Duchamp, 1887-1968, and Man Ray, 1890-1976. Who was Marcel Duchamp? Marcel Duchamp, 1887-1968 Was one of the most fascinating and thought-provoking artists of the 20th century. He experimented with Cubism, Futurism, and championed Dada during an ever-changing and provocative career. Duchamp continually questioned artistic convention at the most fundamental levels even the definition of a work of art. During his early career, he created the iconic nude descending 212 The Staircase, No. 2, 1912, which shocked viewers and critics at the Armory Show in New York in 1913. Though it garnered him a great deal of fame. The work blended Cubist and Futurist styles in its abstract depiction of the moving human form. Duchamp is most closely associated with Dada and Surrealism. One of his most complicated works was 1915's The Bride Stripped Bare by Her Bachelors. Even, more commonly referred to as the large glass. The piece is large, and made of two panels of glass suspended with wire. It is divided into two halves. The top half is the bride's domain while aggressive bachelors dominate below. Highly enigmatic, despite many notes left by Duchamp as to its meaning. Some critics believe the work is a commentary on art criticism itself. Duchamp's groundbreaking and complex approach to art continues to impact the art world into the 21st century. Who was Marcel Duchamp? Marcel Duchamp, 1887-1968 was one of the most fascinating and thought-provoking artists of the 20th century. 
he experimented with Cubism, Futurism, and championed Dada during an ever-changing and provocative career. Duchamp continually questioned artistic convention at the most fundamental levels even the definition of a work of art. During his early career, he created the iconic nude descending 212 The Staircase, No. 2, 1912, which shocked viewers and critics at the Armory Show in New York in 1913. Though it garnered him a great deal of fame. The work blended cubist and futurist styles in its abstract depiction of the moving human form. Duchamp is most closely associated with Dada and Surrealism. One of his most complicated works was 1915's The Bride Stripped Bare by Her Bachelors. Even, more commonly referred to as the large glass. The piece is large, and made of two panels of glass suspended with wire. It is divided into two halves. The top half is the bride's domain while aggressive bachelors dominate below. Highly enigmatic, despite many notes left by Duchamp as to its meaning. Some critics believe the work is a commentary on art criticism itself. Duchamp's groundbreaking and complex approach to art continues to impact the art world into the 21st century. What is a ready-made? A ready-made is an artistic concept that describes an existing functional object that no longer serves its intended purpose and that is instead considered for only its aesthetic value. The best example of a ready-made is Marcel Duchamp's Fountain. 1917, a porcelain urinal Duchamp signed as R. Mutt and submitted as a work of art for an exhibition of the Society of Independent Artists in New York. When Duchamp changed, or augmented, a pre-existing object, he called the work ready-made-aided. The act of signing the urinal can be considered such a change. But a more complex example can be seen in Duchamp's LHOOQ, 1919. For this work, Duchamp took a found object, or a pre-existing object, in this case, a postcard of the Mona Lisa, upon which he drew a mustache. This act of aesthetic vandalism serves to question the authority of art history and the preeminence of so-called fine art. Duchamp's interest in ready-mades reflects Dada provocatism, humor, and irreverence. The concept influenced later artists such as Jasper Johns, Robert Rauschenberg, and Andy Warhol. All artists who manipulated pre-existing images in their work to communicate new meanings. What is a ready-made? A ready-made is an artistic concept that describes an existing functional object that no longer serves its intended purpose and that is instead considered for only its aesthetic value. The best example of a ready-made is Marcel Duchamp's Fountain. 1917, a porcelain urinal Duchamp signed as R. Mutt and submitted as a work of art for an exhibition of the Society of Independent Artists in New York. 
when Duchamp changed, or augmented, a pre-existing object, he called the work ready-made aided. The act of signing the urinal can be considered such a change. But a more complex example can be seen in Duchamp's LHOOQ, 1919. For this work, Duchamp took a found object, or a pre-existing object, in this case, a postcard of the Mona Lisa, upon which he drew a mustache. This act of aesthetic vandalism serves to question the authority of art history and the preeminence of so-called fine art. Duchamp's interest in ready-mades reflects Dada provocatism, humor, and irreverence. The concept influenced later artists such as Jasper Johns, Robert Rauschenberg, and Andy Warhol. All artists who manipulated pre-existing images in their work to communicate new meanings. What is surrealism? Like Dada, surrealism was an early 20th century movement that made a major impact on art and literature between the First and Second World Wars. In 1924, French poet André Breton, 1896-1966, wrote the first Surrealist Manifesto in which he called on writers to free themselves from the restrictions of rationality and explore creativity through subconscious means, including free association, dream analysis, and automatic writing and drawing. The word surreal suggests the merging of dreams with reality to reveal a superior, more inclusive reality. Breton credited Sigmund Freud with developing the foundations of surrealism in his studies in psychoanalysis. Key surrealist artists include Giorgio de Chirico, 1888-1978, Max Ernst 1891-1976, André Masson, 1896-1987, Joan Miro, 1893-1983, Man Ray, 1890-1976. René Magritte, 1898-1967, and Salvador Dali, 1904-1989, among others. The work of the Surrealists is characterized by shocking, often erotic imagery. Such as René Magritte's fusion of the nude female form with a face in his oil painting. L.E. Vile, 1934, and the juxtaposition of surprising, seemingly unconnected elements. For example, Merit Oppenheim covered a cup, saucer, and spoon with fur in her objet. L.E. Dejeuner and Fourier, in 1936. Like many other examples of surrealist art. These disorienting works were inspired by Freudian symbolism and dream analysis. What is Surrealism? Like Dada, Surrealism was an early 20th century movement that made a major impact on art and literature between the First and Second World Wars. In 1924, French poet André Breton, 1896 to 1966 wrote the first surrealist manifesto in which he called 
on writers to free themselves from the restrictions of rationality and explore creativity through subconscious means. Including free association, dream analysis, and automatic writing and drawing. The word surreal suggests the merging of dreams with reality to reveal a superior, more inclusive reality. Breton credited Sigmund Freud with developing the foundations of surrealism in his studies in psychoanalysis. Key surrealist artists include Giorgio de Chirico, 1888-1978, Max Ernst 1891-1976, André Masson, 1896-1987, Joan Miro, 1893-1983, Man Ray, 1890-1976. René Magritte, 1898-1967, and Salvador Dali, 1904-1989, among others. The work of the Surrealists is characterized by shocking, often erotic imagery. Such as René Magritte's fusion of the nude female form with a face in his oil painting. L.E. Vial, 1934, and the juxtaposition of surprising, seemingly unconnected elements. For example, Merit Oppenheim covered a cup, saucer, and spoon with fur in her object. L.E. Dejeuner and Fourier, in 1936. Like many other examples of surrealist art. These disorienting works were inspired by Freudian symbolism and dream analysis. What is Surrealist Automatism? Surrealist artists and writers attempted to free themselves from the restrictions of rationality. By tapping directly into their creative subconscious through automatic drawing and writing. Andre Breton described this process, which he called pure psychic automatism in the Surrealist Manifesto. And Surrealist artists such as André Masson, Joan Miro, and Max Ernst are known for their spontaneous, free-form work. Many of Masson's automatic drawings were done with pen and ink. While Ernst developed what he called frottage, in this technique, Ernst made rubbings of textured surfaces, such as wood floor, which were then incorporated into larger collage works. What is Surrealist Automatism? Surrealist artists and writers attempted to free themselves from the restrictions of rationality. By tapping directly into their creative subconscious through automatic drawing and writing. André Breton described this process, which he called pure psychic automatism in the Surrealist Manifesto. And Surrealist artists such as André Masson. Joan Miro, and Max Ernst are known for their spontaneous, free-form work. Many of Masson's automatic drawings were done with pen and ink. While Ernst developed what he called frottage. In this technique, Ernst made rubbings of textured surfaces. Such as wood floor which were then incorporated into larger collage works.
Who was Salvador Dali? Salvador Dali, 1904-1989, was a Spanish surrealist painter, writer, and filmmaker who gained celebrity status for eclectic art and eccentric behavior, and a curling black mustache. Dali was trained in art at the San Fernando Academy of Fine Arts in Madrid. And his early work exhibits traditional and later Cubist influence. He was a highly skilled realist, though his work was inspired by delirium and he produced jarring fantastical dreamscapes, often inspired by his Catalonian homeland. Dali called his approach the paranoiac critical method. His goal was to use paranoia to communicate an irrational understanding of reality. An approach quite in line with the overall goals of surrealism, according to the Surrealist Manifesto. Dali's most famous work is The Persistence of Memory, 1931. Other notable paintings include Birth of Liquid Desires, 1931 to 1932, and Soft Construction with Boiled Beans, Premonitions of Civil War, 1936. Dali also created sculptural objects such as Lobster Telephone. 1936, and his long-legged space elephant, which appears in both sculptures and paintings. Who was Salvador Dali? Salvador Dali 1904-1989, was a Spanish surrealist painter, writer, and filmmaker who gained celebrity status for eclectic art and eccentric behavior, and a curling black mustache. Dali was trained in art at the San Fernando Academy of Fine Arts in Madrid. And his early work exhibits traditional and later Cubist influence. He was a highly skilled realist, though his work was inspired by delirium and he produced jarring fantastical dreamscapes, often inspired by his Catalonian homeland. Dali called his approach the paranoiac critical method. His goal was to use paranoia to communicate an irrational understanding of reality. An approach quite in line with the overall goals of surrealism, according to the Surrealist Manifesto. Dali's most famous work is The Persistence of Memory, 1931. Other notable paintings include Birth of Liquid Desires, 1931 to 1932, and Soft Construction with Boiled Beans, Premonitions of Civil War, 1936. Dali also created sculptural objects such as Lobster Telephone. 1936, and his long-legged space elephant, which appears in both sculptures and paintings. What is the meaning of the persistence of memory? The Persistence of Memory, 1931, is Salvador Dali's most famous painting. In this work, Dali depicts languid, melting clocks draped over an arid, desert landscape. Unlike many of the other large, abstract works being produced at the time, the persistence of memory is quite small, not much bigger than an ordinary piece of paper. 
it is highly detailed and uncomfortably realistic for such a strange picture. Against a smooth and seemingly infinite horizon, are four liquid clocks. At the center, one of these clocks, really more of a pocket watch, curls over what appears to be a boneless, fish-like face. Another clock oozes off the side of a table-like surface. While another rests upside down, black ants aggressively gathered atop it. Dolly himself compared the objects in the painting to melting camembert cheese. And the entire scene is fixed in an impossible state of timeless transformation. Although there can be no definitive definition of this painting. The work is a meditation on the unfixed nature of time and space. What is the meaning of the persistence of memory? The Persistence of Memory, 1931, is Salvador Dali's most famous painting. In this work, Dali depicts languid, melting clocks draped over an arid, desert landscape. Unlike many of the other large, abstract works being produced at the time, the persistence of memory is quite small, not much bigger than an ordinary piece of paper. It is highly detailed and uncomfortably realistic for such a strange picture. Against a smooth and seemingly infinite horizon, are four liquid clocks. At the center, one of these clocks, really more of a pocket watch, curls over what appears to be a boneless, fish-like face. Another clock oozes off the side of a table-like surface. While another rests upside down, black ants aggressively gathered atop it. Dolly himself compared the objects in the painting to melting camembert cheese. And the entire scene is fixed in an impossible state of timeless transformation. Although there can be no definitive definition of this painting. The work is a meditation on the unfixed nature of time and space. Why is this not a pipe? René Magritte's The Treachery, or Perfidy, of Images, 1928-1929 is a highly realistic oil painting of a tobacco pipe with the word Ceci en est pas un pipe, this is not a pipe. Painted below. Why is this not a pipe? René Magritte's The Treachery, or Perfidy, of Images, 1928-1929 is a highly realistic oil painting of a tobacco pipe with the word Ceci en est pas un pipe, this is not a pipe. Painted below. Who was Man Ray? Born Emanuel Radnitsky, 1890 to 1976, in Philadelphia. 
Man Ray was a major contributor to both Dada and Surrealism. Though he is most well known for his experimental photography. Man Ray was a painter, filmmaker, and writer. Like many other Dada artists, Ray was inspired by industrialism and the aesthetic qualities of machines. Creating startling Dada objects such as gift. 1921, an iron with a row of sharp nails glued to the flat surface. He used tools more often associated with commercial art in his fine art projects. And was the first painter to use an airbrush. A process that fascinated him as it allowed him to create a painting without touching the canvas itself. Man Ray is notable for his experiments with a camera-less photographic process known as the photogram. But which he called the rayograph. With the rayograph, Man Ray could place an object next. To light sensitive paper to create automatic images. He also developed photo montages and mixed media photographs such as L.E. Violon D. Angra. 1924, perhaps his most well known work. The title refers to the 19th century French artist who often portrayed exotic women in his portraits. Man Ray's piece is a photograph of one of his favorite models, Kiki de Montparnasse, born Alice Prin. Upon which he painted the F holes of a violin, making her curving nude body reminiscent of a musical instrument. The image is oddly disturbing, as Kiki's arms are noticeably missing. From view and she is transformed from a subject into an object. Who was Man Ray? Born Emanuel Radnitsky, 1890-1976, in Philadelphia. Man Ray was a major contributor to both Dada and Surrealism. Though he is most well known for his experimental photography. Man Ray was a painter, filmmaker, and writer. Like many other Dada artists, Ray was inspired by industrialism and the aesthetic qualities of machines. Creating startling Dada objects such as gift. 1921, an iron with a row of sharp nails glued to the flat surface. He used tools more often associated with commercial art in his fine art projects. And was the first painter to use an airbrush. A process that fascinated him as it allowed him to create a painting without touching the canvas itself. Man Ray is notable for his experiments with a camera less photographic process known as the photogram. But which he called the rayograph. With the rayograph, Man Ray could place an object next. To light sensitive paper to create automatic images. He also developed photo montages and mixed media photographs such as L.E. Violon D. Angra. 1924, perhaps his most well known work. The title refers to the 19th century French artist who often portrayed exotic women in his portraits. Man Ray's piece is a photograph of one of his favorite models, Kiki de Montparnasse, born Alice Prin. Upon which he painted the F holes of a violin, making her curving nude body reminiscent of a musical instrument. The image is oddly disturbing 
as Kiki's arms are noticeably missing. From view and she is transformed from a subject into an object. Who was Alfred Stieglitz? Alfred Stieglitz, 1864-1946, was an influential photographer and gallery owner. Who aimed to raise the status of photography to that of painting. Born to a German immigrant family, he was raised in New York City. And he formed a group of New York City photographers called Photographic Secession. With a handheld camera, he photographed the city. Capturing sensitive images of a gritty, urban landscape. Stieglitz also photographed cloudscapes, and said that the ever-changing clouds reflected his emotions. Besides his photographic work, Alfred Stieglitz made a significant contribution to Modern art through his 291 gallery, located at 291 Fifth Avenue, which promoted European modernism and supported the careers of many important 20th century artists, including Picasso, Matisse, and Georgia O'Keeffe, who he married in 1924. Who was Alfred Stieglitz? Alfred Stieglitz, 1864-1946, was an influential photographer and gallery owner. Who aimed to raise the status of photography to that of painting. Born to a German immigrant family, he was raised in New York City. And he formed a group of New York City photographers called Photographic Secession. With a handheld camera, he photographed the city. Capturing sensitive images of a gritty, urban landscape. Stieglitz also photographed cloudscapes, and said that the ever-changing clouds reflected his emotions. Besides his photographic work, Alfred Stieglitz made a significant contribution to modern art through his 291 gallery, located at 291 Fifth Avenue, which promoted European modernism and supported the careers of many important 20th century artists including Picasso, Matisse, and Georgia O'Keeffe, who he married in 1924. Who was James Van Der Zee? James Van Der Zee 1886 to 1983, was an African-American photographer who documented the emerging black middle class in New York City during the Harlem Renaissance. He was primarily a portrait photographer and worked in his studio. Though he experimented with double exposures and retouching, Van der Zee painted studio backdrops for indoor photo shoots, and even provided props and costumes for his sitters. Often commemorating important life events such as weddings or family gatherings. Van der Zee's work captures the hopes and dreams of black Americans arriving in the city from the rural south and remains one of the most significant records of the Harlem Renaissance. 
His collected works are now held at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Who was James Van Der Zee? James Van Der Zee, 1886-1983, was an African-American photographer who documented the emerging black middle class in New York City during the Harlem Renaissance. He was primarily a portrait photographer and worked in his studio. Though he experimented with double exposures and retouching. Van der Zee painted studio backdrops for indoor photo shoots, and even provided props and costumes for his sitters. Often commemorating important life events such as weddings or family gatherings. Van der Zee's work captures the hopes and dreams of black Americans arriving in the city from the rural south and remains one of the most significant records of the Harlem Renaissance. His collected works are now held at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Why are the Cubist paintings of Brock and Picasso so similar? Even for scholars, it is sometimes nearly impossible to tell the work of Picasso and Brock apart. And it is possible that Cubism would not have developed at all without the competitive exchange of ideas that occurred during the dueling careers of these two artists. Both explored still lives, were intrigued by the physical properties of musical instruments and often painted with similar color palettes. As Brock himself explained, we were like two mountain climbers roped together, quoted in Stockstad 1079. Who was Salvador Dali? Salvador Dali, 1904-1989, was a Spanish surrealist painter, writer, and filmmaker who gained celebrity status for eclectic art and eccentric behavior, and a curling black mustache. Dali was trained in art at the San Fernando Academy of Fine Arts in Madrid. And his early work exhibits traditional and later Cubist influence. He was a highly skilled realist, though his work was inspired by delirium and he produced jarring fantastical dreamscapes, often inspired by his Catalonian homeland. Dali called his approach the paranoiac critical method. His goal was to use paranoia to communicate an irrational understanding of reality an approach quite in line with the overall goals of Surrealism, according to the Surrealist Manifesto. Dali's most famous work is The Persistence of Memory, 1931. Other notable paintings include Birth of Liquid Desires, 1931-1932, and Soft Construction with Boiled Beans, Premonitions of Civil War, 1936. Dali also created sculptural objects such as Lobster Telephone, 1936, and his long-legged space elephant, which appears in both sculptures and paintings. Who was Pablo Picasso?
Pablo Picasso, 1881-1973, is perhaps one of the most famous modern artists of all time. Born in Spain, he produced thousands of works of art during his lifetime. And is known for his artistic genius and avant-garde innovations. Picasso was a painter and a sculptor and experimented with collage, mixed media, and sculptural assemblages. He is credited with developing Cubism, along with fellow Cubist and fierce competitor Georges Brock. He helped to popularize non-Western art. And he experimented with symbolism, expressionism, classicism, surrealism, and more. Like many of the great artists described by Giorgio Vasari in The Lives of the Artists. Picasso's talent was discovered at a young age by his father, also an artist. He began formal artistic training. As a young boy and was admitted to the School of Fine Arts in Barcelona at 14 years old. During his studies at the school and others, he copied the work of the great masters. And then later began to socialize with avant garde circles of artists and thinkers. Picasso's work features a range of styles, media, and forms and is therefore categorized into periods, including the early Blue Period. During Picasso's Blue Period, he painted the guitar player, 1910. A melancholy portrait of a social outcast playing the guitar with long, bony fingers. After the Blue Period was Picasso's so-called Rose Period during which his work became brighter more delicate, and more varied in color. Work from Picasso's Rose period includes The Family of Salt and Banks, 1905. A painting that depicts a group of traveling acrobats appearing lost in a desolate landscape. One of Picasso's most important paintings is Guernica, 1937. A monumental work inspired by atrocities committed by Spain's far-right political party, the Falange. Which was responsible for bombing the Basque city of Guernica, killing nearly 2,000 people. The painting's dimensions reach nearly 12 x 25 feet. It is a mass of complex imagery and swooping, disjointed human and animal figures in monochrome. Guernica was exhibited at the Exposition Universelle, World's Fair, in Paris in 1937. And has since become so famous that its political impact has been upstaged by its importance as a visual masterpiece. What is a ready-made? A ready-made is an artistic concept that describes an existing functional object that no longer serves its intended purpose and that is instead considered for only its aesthetic value. The best example of a ready-made is Marcel Duchamp's Fountain. 1917, a porcelain urinal Duchamp signed as R. Mutt and submitted as a work of art for an exhibition of the Society of Independent Artists in New York. When Duchamp changed, or augmented, a pre-existing object, he called the work ready-made aided. The act of signing the urinal can be considered such a change. But a more complex example can be seen in Duchamp's LHOOQ, 1919. For this work, Duchamp took a found object, or 
a pre-existing object, in this case, a postcard of the Mona Lisa, upon which he drew a mustache. This act of aesthetic vandalism serves to question the authority of art history and the preeminence of so-called fine art. Duchamp's interest in ready-mades reflects Dada provocatism, humor, and irreverence. The concept influenced later artists such as Jasper Johns, Robert Rauschenberg, and Andy Warhol. All artists who manipulated pre-existing images in their work to communicate new meanings. What is surrealism? Like Dada, surrealism was an early 20th century movement that made a major impact on art and literature between the First and Second World Wars. In 1924, French poet André Breton, 1896-1966, wrote the first surrealist manifesto in which he called on writers to free themselves from the restrictions of rationality and explore creativity through subconscious means. Including free association, dream analysis, and automatic writing and drawing. The word surreal suggests the merging of dreams with reality to reveal a superior, more inclusive reality. Breton credited Sigmund Freud with developing the foundations of surrealism in his studies in psychoanalysis. Key surrealist artists include Giorgio de Chirico, 1888-1978, Max Ernst 1891-1976, André Masson, 1896-1987, Joan Miro, 1893-1983, Man Ray, 1890-1976. René Magritte, 1898-1967, and Salvador Dali, 1904-1989, among others. The work of the Surrealists is characterized by shocking, often erotic imagery. Such as René Magritte's fusion of the nude female form with a face in his oil painting. L.E. Vile, 1934, and the juxtaposition of surprising, seemingly unconnected elements. For example, Merit Oppenheim covered a cup, saucer, and spoon with fur in her objet. L.E. Dejeuner and Fourier, in 1936. Like many other examples of surrealist art. These disorienting works were inspired by Freudian symbolism and dream analysis. What is Futurism? Futurism was an energetic Italian art movement started by the poet Filippo Tommaso Marinetti, 1876-1944, who wrote the first Futurist Manifesto in Le Figaro, a French newspaper in 1909. Marinetti wanted futurism to be a wide-reaching movement that embraced the speed and power of modern industrialism. The goal was to reject the past and to modernize contemporary culture violently if necessary. Visually, futurism would not have existed without cubism. And many futurist paintings feature fragmented forms and geometric near abstraction. However, the futurists tried to distance themselves from this inheritance.
Painters associated with Futurism include Umberto Boccianai, 1882-1916, Gino Severini, 1883-1966, and Carlo Cara, 1881-1916. The futurists created abstract images of machines and placed an emphasis on movement. Giacomo Bala's dynamism of a dog on a leash, leash in motion. 1912, depicts a small dog with blurry legs and a blurry tail made up of quickly dashed, repeated brush strokes. Umberto Boccianai incorporated sculpture into the futurist repertoire. With works such as Unique Forms of Continuity in Space, 1913. This flowing, abstract sculpture was cast in bronze and creates an interplay between two and three dimensional. Space as a formidable figure with outstretched legs, and no arms, strides forward on a horizontal plane. Futurism changed after World War I. Bachanai was killed after being thrown from his horse during a military exercise and the landscape of Europe, both physically and artistically, was no longer the same. Who was Manet? Edgeward Manet, 1832-1883, is considered by many to be the first modern painter. He not only bridged the gap between realism and impressionism, but his work foreshadows early 20th century painting styles and approaches. He was highly knowledgeable about art history, and fiercely rebellious. Preferring art he deemed sincere, rather than perfect. Along with thousands of paintings by other premier artists of his day. Manet's work was rejected by the Salon, the official art exhibition of the Palace of Fine Arts. But, Manet had the opportunity to shock critics and viewers at a specially organized Salon de Refuses. Or, Salon of the Rejected, with his painting Le Dejeuner sur El Herb. The Luncheon on the Grass, 1863, and again in 1865 with another masterpiece, Olympia. Though Manet's work drew inspiration from the great masters, he focused on scenes of modern life including café and leisure scenes around Paris, war paintings and lithographs inspired by contemporary literature. His work is among the most critically acclaimed and valuable in all of art history. However, Manet never achieved this kind of universal recognition during his lifetime. Now, he is considered one of the founding fathers of modern art. 